academic work is very, very different than um, commercial work. Um, it's just a, like the, the pressures of academic work. So in Ezra Klein is a great example of this. That guy writes two or three articles a day. He publishes two or three podcasts a week. But he does that because his entire paycheck is based on ad revenue. So he has, he has a demand. He has to keep audienceship. If he doesn't keep audienceship, he's going to lose his paycheck. Right? And so, like, he, he's created algorithms. He's created mechanisms by which he can create, he can have that type of productivity and keep people engaged in his ideas. In academic work, the, the, it is definitely, you know, um, if you, if, if I was to publish four papers a, a year, that's enough, depending on how good the papers are, that's enough to end up at Stanford. Not all STEM scholars at Stanford publish 10, 15, 20 papers a year, but even still like four academic papers and maybe 20 pages each, like that's, that's world-class level. Two academic papers a year, depending on what you actually write, is a freaking high level of productivity. And so one of the things I, you, you have to know this about me. And then also as you're getting ready to go into your PhD programs, this is something to be familiar with. Um, academic writing is by definition fucking crazy. Like you probably saw that Henry in your internship with the two guys that you were working on, right? You guys produced one paper, right? How long of a, of a working process? Thousands of hours. And so when my proclivity, my predisposition is towards that type of writing because that's how I was trained, right? I spent four years of research to write a hundred pages of work on the forefront of a particular algorithm over the last, like each of the last two papers that I've worked to publish, I spent about two years of work developing the ideas at minimum, right? So one of the things that I'll say is that's my proclivity, but that's actually not a good mechanism to get a high readership. <laughs> right? 